Introduction to wireless networking. If you've taken a look at wireless network products at your local computer store or you've done a little bit of research on the internet, you've probably seen a wide range of different features and options. Well, in this module, we're going to learn about the alphabet soup of wireless standards and learn the differences between 802.11a, b, and g. And once we've learned the differences between the wireless network standards and sorted that all out, we'll learn about the different wireless network configurations that we can arrange a wireless network in. So without any further ado, let's get started and sort out the differences between our wireless network standards. And to do that, we're going to bring up a, another whiteboard. The grandfather, if you will, of the wireless network standards is, and what's really popularized wireless networks in general is, 802.11b. Some of the benefits of 802.11b equipment is that it's very common and relatively inexpensive. And that, as a result, that's really helped to popularize wireless networks in general to the point where we'll find wireless networks at Starbucks, at McDonald's, at bookstores, at hotels, and at airports all over the place now. Wireless networks communicate with computers on the wireless network using radio waves. And 802.b uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency to communicate data or to transmit data throughout the wireless network. And the reason why I point that out is that this is a very common frequency used by other electronic devices. And as a result, there might be some interference between your, your home or your home office or small office wireless network and devices such as uh, cordless phones, microwaves, or even baby monitors. We'll learn some tips on how to deal with those issues in our troubleshooting module. The maximum data transmission rate for wireless equipment using 802.11b is only 11 megabits per second, which is pretty good for basic tasks such as checking email. However, if you need to start sending large files within a wireless network, maybe large pictures or videos or what have you, 11 megabytes can get pretty slow pretty quickly, if you will. Another benefit of using 802.11b equipment is that it has a relatively good indoor range of about up to 150 feet, meaning that your computer configured with a wireless network adapter should be able to connect to a wireless access point all the way 150 feet away from you. Now, this range that I have here will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, and the effective range will also uh, differ depending on the interference between your computer and the wireless access point. For example, the more walls between your computer and the wireless access point, the less range that you'll probably have. Additionally, the data transmission rates will decrease the further your computer is from your wireless access point. However, one of the big disadvantages of the standard is its weak security features. And this is one of the main reasons why a lot of companies haven't introduced wireless networks into their network yet. We'll learn all about the different wireless security features that are available with the different standards in our wireless security module. So those are the key features of 802.11b wireless equipment. And you'll be able to find a lot of this equipment very inexpensively at a lot of computer stores compared to the new wireless equipment. I personally would not recommend that you use 802.11b equipment if you're buying new equipment right now due to its weak security especially if you're in an urban area where your neighbors are really close to. If you're way out in the country and your next neighbor is maybe a mile away or something like that, I wouldn't worry about it and you want to save a little bit of money, sure, go with 802.11b. However, do note, though, if you go to with 802.11b, you'll have weak security. Our next wireless standard was a answer to the cry for more speed. Can I have this wireless network a little faster, please? 802.11a wireless equipment isn't a huge revolutionary change over 802.11b. Really, the equipment itself is very similar to 802.11b equipment. It's not as common. There aren't as many uh, 802.11a wireless network adapters and wireless network access points available at computer stores. And as a result, it's a little more expensive. But the di big difference between A and B is that, number one, it communicates on a different frequency, 5 gigahertz versus 2.4 gigahertz. So you should have, hopefully, less interference with other electronic uh, devices, such as cordless phones. Also, it communicates at a much faster data transmission rate of 
54 megabytes per second versus the 11 megabytes per second with 802.11b. Even though it's faster, there are several disadvantages to using 802.11b wireless equipment. The big disadvantage, number one, is that it's not backward compatible with 802.11b wireless equipment. You cannot mix and match the two. What I mean by that is that you can't have a 802.11a wireless access point with 802.11b wireless network adapters and vice versa. They won't talk to each other. So if you want to go with 802.11a, it's my way or the highway. You have to have all 802.11a equipment. So for people who started out with 802.11b equipment and just want to get a little bit of a faster speed bump, it's not going to happen. Also, a big difference between 802.11b equipment is that the maximum range, the distance from your wireless network computer to the wireless access point is only 75 feet compared to 150 feet with 802.11b equipment. Also, this standard doesn't introduce any new security features. It still uses wireless equivalent privacy, or WEP for short, which is also used in 802.11b equipment to encrypt data as it's being transmitted over a wireless network. The big difference between 802.11a and 802.11b encryption is that in 802.11b, we can encrypt data with 128-bit web encryption, whereas in A, we can encrypt data with 152-bit encryption, which is a slight improvement, but the encryption method itself is flawed to begin with, so it really doesn't provide any higher degree of security. So 802.11a wireless equipment really is all about a speed improvement, but it loses ground in a couple of areas. In contrast, our next wireless standard, which is 802.11a,